everybody. Welcome back to part six on the Adoption app. In this part here, we're going to work on authentication. And we're going to authenticate with device so the user can log in and log out. <clears throat> of course, edit profile, change password. If you forgot password, to get a reset token, all that stuff. So uh, we're going to work first on, obviously, log in with email or create an account with an email and a password. So we're going to use a gem called device. I want you to <clears throat> open the browser window. And let me just close this. Open a browser window and just type in uh, device uh, device gem, <clears throat> and that's going to take you to the GitHub. Well, the first uh, result. Just click on that, <clears throat> and uh, device is gem. So we have to add it obviously to the gem file. So we're just going to come back here. Remember, uh, wiki is extremely important uh, here, so you can look at the wiki as well. Pretty much everything I'm going to you know put in here. I'm pretty much going to. Um, Everything that you see uh, right here, I'm pretty much gonna get it from here. Okay, so uh, there, so gem device, um, and you also wanna type in over here, device, uh, gem, Rails, something like that. So that should take you to uh, Rails guides, adding device, oh, that's Rails girls. Uh, I think that's not, uh, yeah, this is pretty much a really good, um, it's, it's awesome, but I think, in regards to the device uh, version, uh, I think you're going to come to rubygems.org. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see here, we got gem uh, greater than, it says, so here. Uh, you want to copy this one? Just copy that and come over here. And what I want you to do now is I want you to open the device, uh, sorry, the gem file. <clears throat> and then just uh, add device, okay? So uh, right over here, I'm just gonna come right after this, and I'm gonna paste it in gem device greater than or equals to 4.2. I think that's wrong because there is, uh, I believe last time I saw, uh, is that it? Uh, 4.7, look, these are the 4.7.3. So uh, I'm gonna use 4.7.2 because I'm, I'm familiar with it. I know it works. So you are welcome to use 4.7.3. Trust me, as long as you know the what you need to look for in case something doesn't work. Uh, so I'm going to say equals to, uh, whoops, uh, 4.7, uh, 4.7.2. I'm going to, and I'm going to do equal instead, greater than. So as long as it's equal to 4.7.2, because I know it works and I can always change it by myself. Because if you say greater than or equals to 4.7.2, when next time you run bundle, it might uh, change, right? So uh, I'm going to save that. Uh, so once I save it, I'm going to run bundle. Uh, oh, by the way, while you were gone, what I did is I uh, created a new branch called new master. Uh, so just so you know, I've already just, I care a lot about you guys and I care about a lot, a lot about these tutorials. So just want you to know over here, I've uh, created a new master branch for myself. Uh, reason why I did that is because I, um, <clears throat> I, I had a master branch, which I was working for up until like part, I don't know, part 16 or something like that. But then I made a mistake. And I just want to let you know that uh, I just thought I should redo it again. You know, uh, and I, I'm redoing it again because I, I want, want it to be easy for you guys to follow. Okay, so that's why I'm here. And as you can see, created a new branch. So I'm going to just clear this. And uh, over here, I'm going to run bundle because we just installed uh, a device. And make sure you save the file on the gem file. And just run and bundle like that. <clears throat> oh, wow, I have a really bad cough. Um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so once you run bundle, <clears throat> that should um, update the gem file. Why is it not updating? I'm going to hit enter. <laughs> All right. So while that's uh, updated, you want to open, come back to application. Remember the last time we were together, we were talking on part 5B on the views, on the layouts, application.html.erb. We added a navigation so that, uh, so if I run uh, Rails S now, um, we added this navigation bar. So I'm going to remove this navigation bar, okay? And I'm going to put it in a partial file because there's no reason why it should be there, okay? There's no reason why it should be there. So that's what we did. We basically created a navigation bar to test Bootstrap. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to refresh the page. That's where we were. Okay, and uh, come back over here. As you see this nav here <clears throat> inside the body, the body was always there in application.html.erb, but the nav was added by us in the previous part just to test that Bootstrap is working. So I'm gonna cut that, okay? Um, 
<clears throat> I'm going to cut that, Command X, OK? And I'm going to just uh, create a new file. I'm going to create a new folder, actually. <clears throat> it's going to be a shirt folder. We're going to do this like several times. So get used to that. In the views, I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, and the folder is going to be called shared, OK? Now remember, uh, it's going to be called shared. And inside of, uh, inside of shared, I'm going to create a new file called uh, underscore nav bar dot uh, uh, navbar.html.erb. <clears throat> inside the navbar, I'm going to paste that in. And I'm just going to make sure that it looks pretty because when, when you paste things on Visual Studio, it kind of gets off. So command, hold the command key and the curly brace there two times and then save it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to close the navbar now because it's saved. I'm going to come back to html.erb and I'm going to show this file. So I'm going to say, hey, uh, go to this file and show this file. So I'm going to type in render, autocomplete. I hope you did my first parts, installing uh, the proper autocompleted uh, auto completions. So render path is going to be shared, uh, shared forward slash uh, nav, nav bar. And uh, that, if you save this file now and come back here and refresh this, it should work. All right. So uh, we need to follow all these steps that we did just a second ago um, over here on GitHub, OK? <clears throat> on the GitHub uh, br a branch of uh, device, OK? Device. We're over here. Uh, this is, uh, so we do, we, you know, add the device, then we say Rails generate device install. OK, so you want to do that. Uh, but I think there's actually, so we'll add that. And uh, uh, actually, it tells you that we need to install device. Uh, well, it's uh, install environment. Yeah, so we, let's just first uh, grab this here. Rails generate device install. Come back to <clears throat> our little terminal here in Visual Studio. I'm going to stop it first. Do a control C. And I'm going to paste it, Rails generate device install. So make that what that's going to do, and hit Enter, it's going to give you a set of, uh, it's going to install it, and it's going to give you a set of information that you need to do. The first thing you need to do is go step by step. Ensure you have the default options. OK, so it's telling you go to development.rb and ensure that you have all this here uh, inside your development.rb. If you read this here, you can pause the video and read that. Uh, command C, Command C to copy that. And I'm going to go to to, uh, to uh, environments development.rb. So um, config, let's close app, config. And just so you know, guys, in case you you know, want to find, well, anyway, you do command P in a Mac, and you can search the file name. It's much easier. Uh, so go to environments and development.rb. OK, I'm going to come here. And in the bottom here, I'm going to paste it in. There we go. So save that. So that's done. Number two, ensure you have defined uh, uh, ensure you have defined root URL. Okay, we already have that the root to home index. We have that with pages, but we're going to change it now. Uh, so <clears throat> let's go to routes. I'm going to close first of all close development.rb. Let's find routes. Where is routes? So config uh, routes.rb <clears throat> routes.rb Routes.rb. So here it says get pages home. Um, I'm going to put something like, oh, what happened? <laughs> Let's uh, root to pages index. OK, so we want to do that because we already have pages. So uh, pages home. This is the action you see, pages. Whoops, pages home. Because we already created a controller in the previous parts. We created a controller called pages with an action home. Uh, OK, so that's what we did. I'm going to just remove this here. <clears throat> I'm going to save it. Uh, now, so whenever a user logs in, it's going to take him to or her to pages home. That's what this means. This is like, ensure you have defined root URL. So it's going to take it to pages home. That's all that means. So uh, please don't get intimidated by this at all. It's extremely simple, OK? And then, so we're just going to grab the API. No. 
not required to API. <clears throat> okay, that's fine. Ensure that you have uh, flash messages. Okay, we have to make sure that we have flash messages here in application.html.erb. Um, okay, so we have to grab these two. These are the flash messages. When a user logs in, it says, hey, yeah, here's a notice you've successfully logged in. And um, <clears throat> we want to put this on top of the yield. OK, so we got that there. Uh, well, let me just, uh, well, it doesn't matter where we keep those. But well, it matters a lot. It matters a lot. But you want to put it under the nav bar. You know, you don't want to put it on top of the nav bar. And you want to put it above the yield, OK? Uh, I just don't see why we need to put a space there. <clears throat> there, I'm just gonna put some space, a little bit of space to breathe, so you see what's happening. Okay, so we got this uh, shared nav bar that appears in all, all all our pages, and we got this notifications from device. Uh, notice in device, it's uh, part of their JavaScript. It says, "Hey, you've successfully logged in. You successfully changed your, back, changed your password." Or alert is basically errors, including errors as well, or problems with logging in. Okay. Um, so that's that. And uh, just make sure that's all done. So we've done step three. Now step four is Rails generate device views. Of course, we're not going to type in Rails generate device views. We're going to put Rails generates device user. Now, if you're using, um, you know, admins or if you're using, you know, uh, I don't know, doctors, because you want doctors to log in, you would say something Rails generate device doctors. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but for now, we are using the user model, okay? This is 99% of the time, not 99, 90% of the time, you're gonna be using the user because the user logs in, the user logs out. We're doing the very basic baby steps right now. So instead of typing in Rails generate device views, um, <clears throat> we're gonna come back here and it's, it shows you here, Rails, gener Rails generate device model, okay? Because that's, um, okay, so we're gonna grab that. You're gonna do that. That's oh, actually, no, sorry. Uh, here they're talking just about the views. Uh, so we do need to, we do need it. We do need it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And we do need to create Rails generate device views. I am very sorry because without the views, we are pretty much going to be in big trouble, people. We're going to be in big, big trouble. Copy that. Okay. Without views, we're going to be in big trouble. So we need the views, right? We need the view, the login page. I'll show you now. Look, look at the views. Uh, here we have uh, shared, we have pages, we have layouts, right? So the layouts were always there from the beginning of time when we created Rails application. The pages, we created the pages by creating a controller. Remember, we said Rails generate controller pages with action home. And the shared folder, we just made it now. So uh, that's for the nav bar. So if I run what device tells me to run, it's going to create all the views to log in. And we need that. So I'm going to paste that in Rails g device views i'm gonna hit enter and you're gonna see a, a folder is gonna pop up now perfect and that's called a device folder and inside there's a bunch of views okay <laughs> so let's go over the views i'm gonna skip confirmations mailer because it's gonna take forever next i'm gonna go into the registrations the minute someone registers they're gonna have to go to uh your application.com forward slash uh users edit to edit their profile or remember the new.html.erb under registrations means my application, my, my domain.com forward slash users forward slash new to register, to first register with an email and password. So that's close the registration. Sessions, the same thing. Whenever you log in, it's going to be, you know, users forward slash new.html.erb. Okay. Um, and we're going to change these routes eventually. Okay, so we have uh, re registration, sessions, passwords. That's all you need to know for now because these are the most important ones. Um, and then we got, sure, we'll do the confirmations. The confirmations is to confirm uh, uh, that, uh, to confirm a password or something like that, right? Well, yeah, we have to confirm, confirm an email, to confirm an email. And then passwords, in case you forget your password, uh, you have edit and new.html. If you want to edit your password, if you want to like, you know, get a new password because you forgot it, right? Okay. So uh, here's all the views, and uh, it created the paths as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. So now what we need to do next is it's extremely important. We need to actually come back here, and we need to see this Rails generate device model. We're going to use the model of user. 
This means that the minute we create a model, it's going to create a migration file. Okay, it's going to create a migration file, um, and the Vise will create a migration file for us. Okay, and that migration file is going to say, "Hey, the minute you migrate this to the database, create a table." So if you just want to think about it in a simple way, just think about it like this, right? So if I'm here. And I run uh, Rails, if I run this command, which I have to run it, it's not an if, I will, uh, I will run this command, okay? I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna grab this Rails generate device model. But instead of model, I'm gonna say users because my model is the user, as I was talking about earlier. So Rails generate, uh, what was it, device? Uh, device model, yeah. So Rails generate device user. Like that. If I type in, if I if I type that in, uh, what that says is, um, it says that you have to uh, create a, a migration file, and this migration file is going to be inside of first going to create a um, a user.rb file in the model, and then it's going to go to the um, yeah, and then it's going to create a, uh, in the database, in the DB folder, it's going to create a migration. You can see like a numbered migration, like four, five, six, seven, nine, or whatever, underscore users uh, dot RB. And that's going to be um, giving instructions and it's going to create a database. The minute, the minute we, not create a database, create a table, the minute we do Rails uh, uh, DB migrate, it's going to create a, a, a table inside the pet adoption development. Okay. So in the pet adoption, if you click on schemas and pet adoption development, you're not going to see under tables, you're not going to see anything. Okay. Now you probably have seen like, um, you're not going to see a user's table. Okay. I've dropped my database because I was on a different uh, part on this of this tutorial. <clears throat> so I have actually dropped my database in the past. Uh, just so you know, just so you know, uh, I'm not doing anything behind your backs. In case you've seen something here in my screen, but you're not seeing it in your screen, don't worry about it. All I'm saying on the tables, there won't be a user table right now. But later, we're going to create a user table by following these instructions. So, so we're doing Rails generate device user. <clears throat> That's extremely important to know that. Okay, Because if without the user uh, model and without the user table, you can't do anything. Okay, And we're not going to uh, create any actions here. We're just going to follow what device says. So Rails generate device user, just like they said here. Uh, in GitHub, Rails generate device user, the model. So like I said, you can say admin, you can say support, you can call whatever your model you want to call it. But that's what I'm going to call it. Rails G device user, okay? So uh, there you go. So as you can see, the minute you did that, it says, look, it created uh, a migration in the DB. <clears throat> So if you look into the DB, something is green. Green means untracked. We're not tracking it with Bitbucket or uh, we're not tracking it with Git. Okay. So inside the migrate folder, you're going to see uh, device create users.rb. I was wrong about users.rb. It's, it's device create users.rb. That's what device names their model. Okay. Device create users.rb. And if you click on that, it's going to give specific instructions uh, that this file here is an instruction file that says, I want you to create a users table there, create table called users. Do you see that? And inside that users table, I want you to put all these <clears throat> fields or all these columns. I want you to put an email and that email is a string. I want you to put an encrypted password and that's a string, a reset password, a reset uh, password sent at, which is a date and time field. I remember uh, created at, it's a date and time field and uh, timestamps, it's false for now and add the index users email unique true and that's obvious okay so like this is a migration for file that has not been migrated yet so the next thing we need to do obviously is we need to migrate this into the database because if we don't migrate into the database guess what if we come back here to our database there is still nothing there's no tables so there isn't a table so we need to actually run this file and to run this file, this migration file, we actually have to, um, yeah. So, uh, but before we do that, let's come back. Just let's just come back here to uh, to GitHub and see. So, see Rails DB migrate. So that's the next command we need to run. So when we come back here, 
uh, Rails DB migrate, hit the enter key, and you're going to see in a second, there's going to be a new users table created inside the database, okay? And uh, that's uh, going to be within a few seconds. You're going to see, there you go. There you go. Do you see what it says now? It says created the users table, uh, and these are the fields, um, uh, the, the email key, the unique, it's true. So there you go. It, it, it basically, it's, it's just created the table. So if you come back here to PG admin, in case you don't see it, you can always do a hard refresh. Okay. You can do a hard refresh by refreshing the browser because PG admin runs on your browser. Right. So yeah, I'm going to click on servers here and I'm going to see Postgres server, have my Postgres server, right? You could rename whatever these servers remember in the beginning of the tutorials, uh, you can rename them, whatever you want inside the schemas, you will see the users table right here. And inside the user table, you're going to see the columns. And if you click on the columns, you're going to see every single field. Now, right click on the column and, and, uh, sorry, not on the column, right click on the users table and view all rows. That's all you got to do. Again, you right click on the users table like that and you view all rows. And I am inside the schema. The schema is here. So once you're in uh, pet adoption development, uh, you click on schemas, you scroll down. Okay. You're going to find the tables here. You hit the tables and you're going to see users view all rows. That's also a hard refresh as well. When you say view all rows, it's a hard refresh. Now, uh, over here, you're going to see there is nothing, but guess what? There is, there is a row and inside that row, there is all these, uh, uh columns, which are the fields, the ID, the email. Okay. The encrypted password. Why am I clicking everywhere? So I'm going to click it to uh, cancel, cancel, cancel. So basically, these are all the fields. These are all the columns. Now coming back uh, again to um, to what we were talking about. Now let's see if this works. Okay, let's see if it works because we created the, the migration, um, and this should work. Now let's do a Rails S, right? But we have Rails, and guess what else changed? Rails space S. So the Rails server. Uh, guess what else changed? The routes.rb, you're going to see a bunch of things change. Not a bunch, just one more line. It's going to say the device for users. Um, and device for users, uh, I, to be honest, I don't like using two codes. I'm going to change this to one code. Uh, save it. It doesn't matter. You can leave yours two codes. It's fine. But uh, I'm just going to put mine. Route to pages home. Okay, so now device for users, device added that for us. Okay, now come back over here since the server is running and do a refresh and it should work. There should be no errors at all. No route matches pages home. Oh, no route matches pages home. <sighs> oh, okay, let's come back to uh, Visual Studio and um, oh, yeah, of course, because. Uh, Hang on, first of all, uh, let's just remove this here too. Um, yeah, route pages home, and I'm gonna just put it on the top anyway, but there's a reason why this is not the fix. I'm not saying I'm fixing it right now. I just wanna let you know, first of all, uh, the root is pages home. So pages home right now is not gonna work because it's, it's supposed to take you to pages home after you log in, okay? So once you're logged in, it takes you to pages home, okay? So I'm gonna say root pages home, device for users that's there, save it. Okay, just have a look. It's not get pages home. It's not root two, it's just root pages home. And then obviously, um, I'm just gonna stop the server, control C, start the server again. And I want you to know Rails S, whenever you mess around with the routes, always stop and start the server. Come back here and why are we going to pages home? Because remember, we have all these views. Let's just not get off the topic here. The views are the most important. The model, the user model for device, it's very important right now. So let's just focus on that. Of course, pages home is not going to work. So we have to go to the root URL. The root URL is pages home. That's what we said. That's what we said. But even if we had this root too, even if it was like this, even if it was root two, it would still be the same. Look, control C and type in again, Rails X. It still would be the same thing, guys. It's going to be the same thing. Like if I was to come here and do this, it would be the same thing. Well, with those, let the server load. I stopped and started the server. It wouldn't, huh? I thought it was the same thing. Uh, it hasn't loaded. That's why. And it is the same thing. So, um, so again, if I was to put in pages home right now, forward slash pages, 
forward slash home of course it's not gonna it's gonna ha it's gonna have a problem so because pages home is home pages home is that that's why we're saying root two it's not we're not saying get if we if we typed in uh you know uh if we typed in get pages home like before like this get pages home guess what this would be and we typed in pages home it will work well because uh it will work it will work the only reason it's not working is because we didn't stop and start the server so we do a uh, control c and type in rails s but i just want you to be comfortable with this stuff because it, it, it get pages home means get pages home it means find the controller pages with the home action and if we did that it's gonna oh it's just this server takes forever to load sometimes you know i just i wonder Okay, so I guess it's uh, messing around and saying, no, 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 we don't like what you're doing here. Uh, so, of course, uh, it's root. So, I'm going to say root because that's a shortcut and not root two, just root pages home. That makes more sense. Uh, and I'm going to do Rails S. And again, people, pages home doesn't exist. It's not saying here, if we wrote page, get pages home, yes, it's going to exist. But now it's root two pages home device for users. Um, and right now pages home won't work. Okay. So that's how the route, the uh, routes that are be shall be is like that root. Just have a look root pages, home device for users, just like that. Okay. So we come back here. It's working now. Let's test the important stuff. The most important stuff forward slash users forward slash, uh, new. Remember what this is? You know what this is? If I hit enter, this is going to be, um, uh users it's supposed to be users this is the views that we made remember rails generate device views uh users um actually uh not sure why this let's come here what happened why oh okay that's okay control c let's do a rake routes and we'll see all our routes here <clears throat> we installed the device we created the model we the migrated the uh the model to the database so here rake routes is an important command to remember because it tells you all the routes users sign in users sign out right that's where it is so users sign in okay so we copy that uh users sign up okay that's what ugh, i'm so crazy because uh, obviously i was just using my common sense and i was saying well that's gonna be the route but it's been a while so uh there users sign up if you do users sign up the server is not running so i'm gonna have to run the server rails s um uh, coffee all right get some glass of water too See, the server is running now. We come back to Chrome, user sign up, and it will work. User sign up will work. And guess what? Uh, we can't do user sign in. There is a reason why, because we haven't created the user yet. So obviously, we can log in with what? With fake email and password? It's not going to work. Now, I want to I want to test this first. So I'm going to say click here, forgot password. You know where this is coming from? This user sign in is user sign in is coming from uh i want you to close routes we don't need that anymore close the migration file we don't need that anymore uh application the html uh you can close that too we don't need that anymore the gem file we don't need come to views okay so let's just close everything else close config close layouts uh close db okay so views device and click on registrations okay or first sessions sessions this is a very important one sessions new click on that you look 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 see login hey 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 i'm gonna say something like hello we are gonna work so hard to change this <laughs> we we gonna work so bloody hard uh to make this view <laughs> okay so if I save that and come here, look, it's gonna work so bloody hard. And it, let's see if I if I spell this correctly. Um, so that's what this is. Okay. So the sessions new means that I'm just logging in. Okay. Now, gosh, I, this is kind of negative. We don't want that stuff. This is so easy. 
login is super easy. Okay. Did I even did I even spell super correctly? I don't even know how to spell super correctly. Save that. Come back over here. Refresh that. It's super easy. Yeah. <laughs> now that's some positive attitude. You know, that's some positive attitude. Now look earlier. I'm here in part 13. I was creating the avatar. You can see woman.png. Do you see that? Oh boy. I worked so hard. So hard. And you know, some of my videos, I forgot to even put the volume on. The volume was not running right here. I recorded a whole hour of video and the volume wasn't running. Anyway, so the login is super easy. Okay, now that's in sessions new. Come back here and look at the registrations. Registrations, there's new.html.erb. There is edit.html.erb and registrations. And then we have passwords. Okay, so how would registrations, forgot passwords, sign up? So if I click sign up, this is registrations, new.html.erb. If I want to log in, this is sessions, new.html.erb. And if I want to edit profile, it allows you only if you're logged in. Okay. So forgot password, all that stuff is so easy. So now you got it. Now I'm going to type in uh, sign up. And this is the time we're going to test everything. So I'm going to say hello, uh, hello at gmail.com. This is going to be my email. It's a fake email. And then I'm going to type in something like, um, why is there a suggested password? This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable about suggested passwords. All right. So uh, I'm going to type in something like, uh, hello, one, two, three. Hello, one, two, three. And I'm going to click sign up. Now, if you typed in less than four, like one, two, three, four, it's not going to work. You, you have to have a six minimum. Okay. Now, this is successfully signed up with an email and password. And look at our database. Guess what happens? If you do a hard refresh, like users, and then right click and view all rows like that, you're going to see hello at gmail.com. There. Do you see that? Hello at gmail.com with a password. This is encrypted. And then it's going to say created on October 4th, 2020 and October 4th, 2020. So that's the month, the year, month and day. And this is, this is the time. Okay. So without time zone. Okay. This is my local time. All right. So what else? And there we go. So if I want to create another user, if I want to log in now, look, uh, come back to put adoption app and I'm going to sign out. Remember on the rake routes earlier, I did the rake routes. Well, there is, there is sign out too. There is sign out too. So if you come here, and I'm going to make this smaller. Uh, if you come back here and you see sign out, look, sign out is user sign out. And if I run this, if I run this, look, if I run this, this is a path and it runs the destroy user session path with delete method. Okay. And if I run this here, guess what's going to happen? It's going to sign me out. Ooh, no route users sign out. But why? Because it's supposed to be the destroy uh, user session path. Destroy users. It's supposed to run. It's supposed to run. Uh, it's supposed to run this here. Destroy user session path. Okay, that's what it's supposed to run. And this is supposed to be inside of. Um, it's supposed to be inside your. Um, we haven't added the sign out button, but once we add the sign out button, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the destroy user session path. And once that, once that's clicked from the front end, it's going to come to the back end here and it's going to say, Hey, log out my user. And the user is going to end up in users sign out page. Okay. And it's going to say sign out successfully. So there we go. This is all with device guys, please like go over here to GitHub and see what's happening. Like there's a bunch of parameters here that we can do. We're going to do later on. So this is it. I'm going to make this short because we have to style the device views. I've already in uh, some, you know, I'm looking at some uh, uh, templates here. They're just HTML templates with bootstrap, you know, and we're going to be using this in our next uh, part. Okay. Because I don't, last thing I want to do now is, is mix HTML tutorial with Ruby and Rails. So we're already struggling as it is. We can use a template. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fast development all about. You can look at, 
a lot of other HTML templates. You're more than welcome to buy whichever one you would like. But this one here is free. Um, and it's not the ideal one, but it's going to make our UI look better. We can always improve it later. OK, guys, thanks so much for watching the tutorial. See you guys in part, uh, let's call it part uh, seven. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye-bye.